Excellencies, distinguished guests, good morning. I'm honored to be here as a Brazilian woman with you today to commemorate the International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery and Transatlantic Slave Trade under the theme Fighting Slavery's Legacy of Racism Through Transformative Education. To leave the past behind is an expression commonly used by those who yearn for new, for new beginnings. It gives them the sense of not clinging to what has happened, of letting go of the past and moving on. Although I understand the hopeful meaning of the expression in such cases, I would like to offer other meanings that have a deeper relationship with our shared history and culture. In Brazil, my home country, leaving the past behind was used as an ideological strategy to overlook a history of oppression and to ignore the damage caused to the black population by nearly 400 years of slavery. It's important to remember that Brazil was the last in the Americas to abolish slavery. And in the period of post-abolition, the ideology of racial democracy was imposed. Racial democracy is a romantic idea of overcoming racial conflicts by the denial of races. Growing up as a child in Brazil, it was very common for people to say, races, that only happens in the United States and South Africa. Brazil is mixed racist and has overcome racism. We have left the past behind. In fact, the ideology of racial democracy undermined black people's search for memory and truth for a real understanding of the consequences of enslavement and enslaved societies. This understanding and the remedial actions, such as reparation policies, have been delayed for decades. It was the collective efforts of the black civil rights movement and the work of critical intellectuals in Brazil who refuted the ideology of racial democracy and exposed the wounds and hard truths of the past. History needs to be remembered so that in the present, we can, we can overcome and transform its consequence and build a more hopeful future. As stated by Hannah Arendt, it's necessary to delve deeply into past narratives and to confront the atrocities committed so that you do not run the risk of normalizing and repeating the evils of oppression. It's not a question of leaving the past behind. It's already left behind in the chronological sense. What is needed is to bring the past to light so that you can better understand and come to terms with the contradictions of the present. In Illusions, the intellectual Grada Quilomba reinterprets Greek myths from an anti-colonial perspective. The story of Narcissus is reinterpreted to reflect the mirroring and self-absorption of the white racial group. This metaphor was also used by the Brazilian intellectual Cida Bento when she wrote about the narcissistic pact of whiteness, a silent pact among white people who self-reward, self-protect, and boycott difference reflecting themselves in the image of the colonizer as a universal political paradigm. Quilomba further analyzed the figure of Echo, the nymph in love with the young hunter Narcissus, who is cursed to repeat his last words. Inspired by these reflections, I will conduct an exercise with you to identify some echoes of the voice of Narcissus in slavery system societies and to identify who chants them. E echoes are chanted as the fragmented reproduction of a phrase manifested repeatedly. As we proceed with the exercise and consider the history of Brazil, we face structural inequalities that are perpetuated and expose the repetition of new colonial processes. 
Quilomba has analyzed the structural remains of slavery and colonialism, determining that their, his, that their histories are poorly resolved and function in our midst as ghosts. In traditional lore, ghosts are wandering spirits that are trapped in the earthly plane, disturbing and haunting places we inhabit. Ghosts as old as the caravels that still echo in our daily life, recalling the history of a country built on more than 300 years of slavery. Today, the foundations of the economy continue to impoverish the black population and their descendants. The echoes of that history exist in the memories of the abductions that were perpetrated in Africa by colonizers, in the memories of slave ships and the ports where bodies were made into commodities, their teeth and bones evaluated, in the memories of plantations and whips, the sirens of police vehicles, the high rates of female rape in the hierarchy of lives and the residue of oppression that echoes in hate speech on social media. We can confront these personal and collective histories or avert our gaze. In that site of loneliness and recognition, we may acknowledge a diversity of people who now occupy the space of power and knowledge. We may call the women who serve our coffee by name. In my personal family history, before marrying my father, my mother was a maid, and I remember her speaking of the loneliness of the service elevator where she stood, having to effusively thank the family she served when she was handed their old coats. I imagined the loneliness of not being seen, of spending years working in a place without people knowing your name. Telling the history of those who have been victims of human trafficking is an important step in confront and acknowledging the past. So the ghosts can no longer hunt us. We needed to give them a different destination. We needed to tell the history of slavery from the perspective of those who, who resisted and fought and those who pains were too hard to bear. I believe in the healing power of acknowledgement. To break with the colonizing gaze is to believe in the plurality of history, to ask and listen and record the stories behind the sad eyes, to see the humanity of those who, due to, opp due to oppression, have been confined to places of subordination. Recognizing the consequences of the past must drive us to create a future of opportunities, and this must include the creation of public policies that will ensure the emancipation of black populations and victims of trafficking. Education plays a fundamental role in creating opportunities and broadening our worldview. Education has the power to transform people and institutions. The Brazilian educator Paulo Freire argued that education should be a practice of freedom, a movement that expanding the understanding of our realities in order to transform them. Lately, much has been said about the importance of diversity and policy reforms, but I think that this conversation must be linked with the conversation about inequality. We needed to talk about inequality as it was historically constructed, constructed during colonization. When we understand the consequences of this history, we become agents of transformation in our world. And that commitment must be non-negotiable. Thank you.